एवरीवन माय नेम इज आस्था चौहान वेलकम टू द ट्यूटोरियल्स पॉइंट इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव लर्न ऑल अबाउट एनोमली डिटेक्शन एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट एसोसिएशन रूल लर्निंग सो लेट्स सी व्हाट्स इन फॉर यू इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट मार्केट बास्केट एनालिसिस एसोसिएशन रूल माइनिंग एसोसिएशन रूल वर्किंग व्हाट इज द मैथमेटिक्स बिहाइंड इट एसोसिएशन रूल एसोसिएशन रूल एग्जांपल and at the end what are some types of association rule learning now let us start with market basket analysis most of us have visited retailer shops for our daily needs right so how do we generally purchase any product we heads towards the product section we pick that product and then heads towards the billing counter but in today's world organizations primary goal is to increase their revenue can this be possible just by pitching one product at a time to the customer answer to this question is clearly no hence organizations begin mining data relating to frequently bought items so market analysis is one of the key techniques used by the large retailers to uncover association between items let's see some example customer who buys bread have 60% likelihood to buy a gem as well and the customer who buys laptops are more likely to purchase laptop bags as well they tries to find association between products and items which gives assisting in right product placement typically it figures out what products are being bought together so that organizations can place them in similar manner as we discussed in one of our example that the customers who purchase bread are more likely to purchase gem as well so in that case the marketing team of the retail shop should target those customers by providing them some offer so that they will buy third item as well let's say eggs in this case so when the customer sees any special offer or discount offer on the eggs they will be encouraged to spend more and buy the third item so this is what market basket analysis is all about now let's see association rule mining association rule learning is a kind of unsupervised learning technique that tests for the reliance of one data element on another data element and designed appropriately so that it can be more cost effective it tries to discover some interesting relations or associations between the variables of the data set it depends on various rules to find interesting relations between variables in the database association rule mining can be thought of as if then relationship suppose if an item a is being bought then the chances of item b picked by the customer under the same transactional id is found out we need to understand here that it is not any casualty rather it's a coincidence pattern that comes to the force now there are two elements to this rule first one is if and second one is then if is also known as antecedent and then is also known as consequent antecedent is an item or group of items that typically found in the item set while consequent comes along as an item with antecedent group or groups of antecedents approaches now if we look at the image a arrow b it means if a person buys item a then there is high probability that he will buy b as well we have just discussed a simple example of bread jam and eggs but what if we have thousands and thousands of data if you go to any professional data scientist with that data you can just imagine how much of profit you can make with data scientist will provide you the right examples and right placement of the products that you can do and you can get lots of insights about that that is why association rule mining is very good algorithm that helps business make profit now let's talk about the working of association rule mining association rule mining is all about building the rules we have just discussed one of those simple rule that if you buy a then there is a possibility you will buy b as well this kind of relationship in which we find relation between two items a arrow b is also known as single cardinality but what if you buy a b and there is possibility of buying c as well or b by a b c and there is 
possibility of buying D as well. In these cases, usually cardinality increases and lots of combinations are found there. But what if we have thousands and thousands of data? Just imagine how many combinations or how many rules we are going to create. And that is why association rule mining has such measures that we do not end up creating thousands of rules. We have three types of matrices here that are support, confidence and lift. Support is the frequency of the item A or the combination of item A or B. It's basically the frequency of the item which we have bought. And what are the combinations of the frequency of the items that we have bought? So with this, what we can do is we can filter out the items that have been bought less frequently. Next is confidence. Confidence tells us how often A and B occur together, given the number of times A occur. This helps us in solving many of our problems because if somebody is buying A and B and not buying C, we can just rule out C at that point of time. Using this, we can define our minimum values for support and confidence. We can set the values of support and confidence and use them in our algorithm and filter out the data and we can make rules using that. But what if even after filtering out, we have 5000 of rules? We have to make 5000 rules for each item and that's practically impossible. So for that, we need third calculation that is lift. If we look at the denominator of the lift, we have independent support values of A and B. So this gives us the independent occurrence probability of A and B. And we know that, that there is lot of difference between the random occurrence and association. So if the denominator is more, that means the occurrence of randomness is more than the occurrence because of association. So lift is the final verdict. We know whether we have to spend time on the particular rule we have got here or not. Now let's look at an example. So we have set of items here, A, B, C, D and E and set of transactions T1, T2, T3, T4 and T5. We can see here that in transaction T1, we have A, B and C. In transaction T2, we have A, C and D. In transaction T3, we have B, C, D. In transaction T4, we have A, D and E. And in transaction T5, we have B, C and E. After that, what we generally do is we make rules. So let's say we have these rules here, A, R, O, D. C arrow A, A arrow C, B and C arrow A. What that means is if you buy A, there is possibility that you will buy D as well. If you buy C, there is possibility that you will buy A as well. If you buy A, then there is possibility that you will buy C as well. And at the end, if you buy B and C, then there is possibility that you will buy A as well. So, Using these rules, we will calculate the support, confidence and lift values. And you can see here also that in this table, we have rule and support, confidence and lift values. Now, here is a quiz for you all. And the question is, what does lift measure in the context of association rule? And the options are the ratio of confidence to support, the improvement of the rule over random chance, the decrease in error rate and the last option is the impact of rule on dimensionality reduction. If you know the answer, please write down that in the comment section. Now, let's talk about types of association rule learning. And first one is a priori algorithm. This algorithm needs frequent data sets to produce association rules. It is designed to work on databases that include transactions, this algorithm needs a breadth first search and hash tree to compute the item set efficiently. And what does this frequent data set mean? Frequent data set is that item set whose support value is greater than the threshold value. Now, second type is eclat algorithm. 
the e clat algorithm represents equivalent class transformation this algorithm needs a depth first search method to discover frequent item sets in the transaction database it implements quicker execution than a priori algorithm and the next type is fp growth algorithm fp growth algorithm represents frequent pattern it is the enhanced version of a priori algorithm and describes the database in the form of tree structure that is referred to as frequent pattern or tree. This frequent tree aims to extract the most frequent patterns from that. So that was it for this video. We have already covered the supervised machine learning part in which we have discussed about KNN algorithm, decision tree, linear regression, support vector machine, random forest, naive base, and logistic regression. And with this video, we have also completed unsupervised machine learning part in which we have covered k-means clustering, hierarchical clustering, principal component analysis, anomaly detection, and association rule learning in this video. And from the next video, we are going to start reinforcement learning part. So stay tuned with tutorials point. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.